And you're in Kalgoorlie. Great little spot to come to is Hannon Park. Might need a map to find it. It's tucked away there, but uh, it's a great place. A lot of locals come here. There's uh, parks and barbecues and little party areas, so uh, it's good. And if you're into a little bit of a history, it is pretty fascinating, but there's a uh, very large cemetery. And if you can imagine back in the mining days and things, there's a few stories of uh, some um, ex-miners and bits and pieces that have been over in that way. It is a lovely cemetery though. So yeah, we'll have a look around here in Hammond Park and show you what it's all about. So yeah, when you first come in, greeted by a little bit of culture. There's a little place around here somewhere that reminds me of uh, Bachelor. Um, there's some birds roaming around as well if we can find them. The peacocks and I think there might be some emus as well. Alrighty ho, well there's the emu fence and the emu display but I can't see any emus nearby at the moment but it is a pretty big enclosure there. There we go, this is more like it. Emus and kangaroos. Mm. Time around Mount Magnet. This one's come up and visit us. You see the chicken? Here's the chicken. Here's the chicken over there. How are you? Did you say hello, Maka? Oh, you're going to dance, Cocky? Dance, Cocky? Dance, Cocky? Hello, Maka? What does it say? Dance cocky! So it's the pheasant, can lay up to 12 eggs, yes. And can live for 15 years. As long as it's not pheasant shooting season. <laughs> How are ya? And then of course, walking around we'll find the peacock. And here we go, upon walking around I discovered, yeah, there's a peacock that walks the park. Obviously, been out doing all the entertaining and having a little rest time right now. It's one or two peacocks about. Oh, how cute is this? <laughs> there's, even some, there's even some crocodiles. Oh, there's crocodiles in here too. How come the crocodile hasn't eaten the baby ducklings yet? Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful little oasis. Look at the emus coming from that paddock. We saw them before coming over for a drink. There's some over there and a swing. What else we got to swing over there and have a look at? Oh, the turkey. Look at the turkey over there. Man, that's a big turkey. Yeah. What am I looking for? Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'll see if I can zoom in on that one. We've all been out, a little resting right now, I guess. Looking busy. Duck, 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 duck. Duck, duck, duck. duck. Little duck ducks.
Well, here it is, the two up shed. It's just out of Kalgoorlie. It's only about, I don't know, five, 10 k's out of Kalgoorlie. Um, it's a place where way back in the 1800s, I mean, late 1800s, of course, when the gold miners were here, they needed a place to gamble and spend their money and I guess buy some booze and things that used to be out here. Um, so yeah, two up, it's um, heads and tails. So um, the bloke would be in the middle here, I think he called spinner, and he'd have a, a little little board and uh, it would hold two um, pennies. And the spinner would throw the, the pennies up in the air, they've got to go at least two metres above his head, and land down on the ground. Ah, the board was called a kip, K-I-P I think it was. Put it on the little board, kip, throw it up. Yeah, two metres down on the ground. And I think before they hit the ground, everybody's got to basically place their bets. And here's the tail. So, still, uh, this is one of only two places in Australia where you can legally um, play two up all year round. Um, out here at the Kalgoorlie one, um, just on Sundays. So, today is a Sunday, and it hasn't started here yet, so I guess it's a little bit of a late starter. Um, and the other place, I said there was two, the other place is I think Broken Hill Palace, I believe. And I don't know what days they have it. We find that out when we go through Broken Hill. So watch this space. So yep, I bet you, as they say, and um, if these walls could talk, I bet you they'd tell some stories um, way back, you know, 100 plus years and what's been going on in this little circle amount of stories and yarns and deals and everything that's gone down so yeah a magic serene little place actually especially when it's quiet like this so i guess this was ooh, maybe the men's urinal <laughs> how's this for a, a room with a view yeah, it's been modernized slightly <laughs> you're sitting there and your head's just above the corrugated iron They've slightly modernised this one a bit better. They've gone and put a port a loo in amongst the corrugations. Head back this way. There's your two up shed. Okay, next stop on our uh, tour of Kalgoorlie. This is Mount Charlotte. Mount Charlotte Reservoir. It's the end point of uh, what was way back in the early 1900s, an amazing feat. Uh, blokes, what was his name, C.Y. O'Connor. He, uh, he's from Perth, he built, um, well he's not from Perth, but in Perth he uh, he built a, uh, I think the Fremantle docks and was contracted to um, build a pipeline some nearly 600 kilometres, say 550 odd kilometres I think it was, 560 kilometres. Um, yeah, so um, we'll find out the story of Mr. C.Y. O'Connor. A great view from here. Um, we haven't even got to the top of the uh, the reservoir yet. Over in the distance, there is the uh, the waste rock or the stockpiles there of all the uh, the stuff that's come out of the super pit, which definitely makes quite a, a landmark here in uh, Kalgoorlie. And then out in the distance, there is yonder. <laughs> that's where uh, I think uh, a lot of those trucking programs where they go across the shortcut which is the longest uh, shortcut in Australia across the middle or something and um, beyond anyway rabbit on enough here so an interesting fact on the uh, the the pipeline 
is that uh, 1903 water for the Western Australia's eastern gold fields has been pumped from Mundaring Weir back in the Perth Hills and the water can take one to two weeks to reach this reservoir and of course from Mundaring Weir which we'll hopefully get some footage of um, that is now uh, holding three times more water today than originally um, after the wall was raised um, 10 meters back in 1946 and 1951. Charlotte Reservoir it's been lifted to a height of 390 meters to travel a distance of 460 kilometers from Mundaring Weir near Perth. Water enters the reservoir through an inlet pipe and is stored in the tank and can hold 9 million litres of water. That's as much as four and a half Olympic swimming pools. Not a lot to see at the top of a reservoir. Obviously, you've got to try and keep uh, keep it cool, keep uh, impurities out. And uh, but to be standing on here, of what water has travelled nearly 600 kilometres to get here to the town. An interesting uh, thing that I learnt too was, um, even though we got nearly 500 kilometres to gain water from Mundaring Weir to Kalgoorlie. There is some 8,000 kilometers of extra piping off of that to take water to other towns. So any towns apparently between here and uh, Mundaring back to Perth and things, they all get water from that pipeline. It's incredible, what a lifeline. We're on a little bit of an adventure, we're going to go exploring. Uh, top end of um, Kalgoorlie, there's a little park, can't pronounce it right now, I think it's Kar Karalua or something, it's in about, uh, what did it say, about 9 k's from here. Yep. Um, we'll go through, um, there's some cycle trails we'll go through, um, there's a little arbitorium and um, just out past the golf course and we'll, yeah, go and stretch our legs. It's the first bit of exercise that we've had for a while, we've been busy working. Here we go. Here we go, Carl Kula Bushland Park. Seven k's of walking trails meandering through out the park. And what's interesting there is that uh, it was one of six generation zones which formed the green belt around the city of Kalgoorlie. Apparently quite dusty. Obviously home for a lot of wildlife and insects. And this little viewing platform here gives you a grand 360 degree view of the gold fields Kalgoorlie. It's really awesome. That's the uh, the roaster or Gigi Gigi Dunup or something like that, I think they call it. That's looking out towards Paddington, um, back out towards um, Gualia. Out over that way there's the uh, what do you call it, the BHP smelter. So uh, yeah, pretty much in a direct line, that's where we've cycled from. But 
uh, yeah, nice spot. What do you reckon, hun? Pretty good, eh? Yeah. Been here for, what, four years and uh, heard about it, never came out. Pleased we took that one. Awesome. Anyway, back on the bikes, make our way back to base. That's a nice bit of exercise for the day. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. It's been good bringing this content along, we've really enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like to see more of it, please uh, hit the like, share and follow button. Um, also the comment, drop a comment in the line there if you want to see anything um, or can help us um, find um, new uh, material and things as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for following Sweet As RV.